The transatlantic slave trade began during the 15th century when Portugal and subsequently other European kingdoms were finally able to expand overseas and reach Africa. The Portuguese were the first to move Africans enslaved back to Europe. It is estimated that by the early 16th century, as much as 10% of Portugal's population was of African descent. After the European discovery of the American continent, the demand for African labor gradually grew. As all the sources of labor, both European and American, were found to be insufficient. The Spanish took the first African captives to the Americas from Europe as early as 1503, and by 1518, the first captives were shipped directly from Africa to America. The majority of African captives were exported from the coast of West Africa, some 3,000 miles between what is now Senegal and Angola, and mostly from modern-day Republic of Benin, Nigeria and Cameroon. But at the coast of Ghana are a number of ancient castles and forts, marking the beginning of the slave's perilous journey during the era of the slave trade. These fortresses were the last memory the slaves had of their homeland before being shipped off across the Atlantic, never to return again. I was there in one of the castles to capture this story, the Cape Coast Castle. Originally built by Sweden in the 1650s, then shifted to the Danish, then the Dutch, and then became an English possession by the 1660s. In the castle's early decades, trade revolved around gold, wood, and textiles before English merchants began to seek captive Africans in large numbers. As I walked in, we could hear the singing of local traditional priests who in the dungeon had their shrine in honor of their religious beliefs. My tour guide told me how much slaves were held in the castles, where the slaves came from, and how they were held captive before being shipped off into Europe and the Americas. This is actually the youngest, as well as the smallest, of the three castles built along the coast of West Africa. But then we see that this is the biggest slave castle. It's the biggest slave castle because it was built at the time when the transatlantic slave trade was at the highest level. So the dungeons here were actually built much bigger to hold about 1,500 people at the same time. Well, the people that were brought here were not all from Ghana, they brought them in from several parts of Africa. But the biggest number came from West Africa and they had to walk from wherever they were captured, either tied up or in shackles and chains. They find themselves here in Cape Coast Castle in particular, before they send them into the dungeons, each group of Africans that were here were owned separately by lots of British companies. So the companies will then put metals with their initials on them into fire. It tends where they pull it out. Before the metal goes to any part of the human body, they smear that part up with oil before they brand them. After branding them, they will send them into the dungeons where they stayed at least two weeks or three months waiting for the arrival of the slave ships. Now we are in the male dungeon, starting from here all the way down to the fifth room. The whole place took about 1,000 black men. 1,000 black men, mathematically we will say that each of these rooms held about 200 people. We walked through the door of no return. At this point, it was a heavy moment for me. But what is being done 
to ensure that this heritage is never lost. Sebastian, my tour guide, told me that routine checks are frequently conducted on the castle to ensure that it is always in shape and never lost. Bennett Joseph, New Central TV.